Hello, welcome to CarCast in Edmonds. I'm Matt D'Andrea, here with Alistair Weaver. Uh, today's an exciting day for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> on, online, on social media, it's a big Edmonds day. <laughs> Have you been following our uh, our entertaining, uh, our, my entertaining morning? I, I, I woke was, up uh, this morning to uh, a, a very fairly positive uh, tweet, I guess we're still calling it. I don't know what X is. What do they call the the action item do you x something or do you tweet something but i saw a very positive looking uh tweet from edmund saying tesla cybertruck we got our hands on one it was comfortable overall we like it kind of missed the range estimate and now i look on the website and I'm like kind of didn't miss the range estimate we'll explain why so um that's about as much setup as i could put forward but you're going to have to explain what's what's going on here uh, and what's your thoughts on Cybertruck? Now that you got your paws on it, what's 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 going on with Cybertruck? Yeah, I spent most of the week in the Cybertruck. Um, yeah, so should we start at the beginning? Mm -hmm. So as you know, because we talk about it enough on the show, we've put like huge effort behind the Edmunds EV range test. So every EV that we get into building goes off around this range test around Southern California, and we've done about 100 vehicles so far. Got our hands on the Cybertruck, and we wanted to do the first proper independent range test and efficiency test of the Cybertruck. And the efficiency test is also quite important because, A, that's how much you're going to spend to, to run this thing. And also, Tesla's made some pretty outlandish claims about how efficient it was relative to some of its rivals. So we wanted to, to dig into that a little bit. But anyway, we looked at – there's no EPA rating yet for the Cybertruck, so, but Tesla had their own figure, which – for all the research we could do and all over their site, 340 miles. So off we go. And we didn't hit our, uh, we didn't hit, I look in the website, but we didn't hit our, uh, and ultimately hit the 340 mile, uh, we didn't hit the 340 mile range. We actually achieved 334, which we thought was, was really good. And we also made the point that it didn't have the correct wheel caps uh, because there's been a, a problem with them. Tesla's needing to update them. And we actually come out and acknowledge that had it had that aerodynamic part, then likely this may have hit Tesla's range figure. Now, the right. reason this gets controversial is because every Tesla we have tested to date has never hit its EPA estimate. And there's a real there's a reason for that. It's because Tesla uses something called the five cycle test, whereas most manufacturers like Ford use the three cycle test. Sorry, the two cycle test, or the three, the two cycle test. And I could get you, I could get very geeky about all the details, but basically they self certify and the five cycle test tends to give you a better result. Uh, but the problem is in the real world, it rarely, you rarely achieve the numbers. So every Tesla we've ever tested didn't hit its EPA. And here we were saying that we don't have an EPA number. But actually, this is a pretty good result because we got pretty close to Tesla's own estimate, which tends to be on the more optimistic side. So we confidently published the piece this morning. Every All was well with the world. And then somebody with a big following, uh, a guy called Merritt Sawyer on, on, on Twitter or X, as it now is, came out uh, and said, well, you're wrong because it's 318 miles because you were on the all-terrain tires. So cue okay. lots of internal phone calls. And of course, like the first thing that you do in this instance is because, you know, we get this a lot. We built this big social following. We built this reputation around testing EVs, particularly Teslas. So everything that we publish now gets a lot of attention. So in some ways, it's quite flattering that we've reached a level where people care about what we say. Anyway, my phone goes. I'm driving the driving my daughter to school and you better have a look at this. And then, like, you know, we in, in turn, we do the, there's a, the, you sort of go into what, you know, traditional kind of media management. The first thing you do is say, are we wrong? Because right. lots of people say things all the time. So the first thing you say is, like, what's the, you know, what's the evidence here? Are we wrong? So we started digging into it. And if you look at the Tesla website and you try and specify, like, a, a dual motor car, which is what we were driving, it just says 340 mile range. However, we then started to dig a bit deeper. And this the car that we were driving was a foundation model, which was like a, a limited edition run of 
what other manufacturers would call a first edition car. Right. This was supplied on these all-terrain tires. And if you ordered one, when you ordered one, the website said 318 miles. But okay. you can't find that anywhere now because they're no longer selling it. So at which point we're like, okay, we just, you know, we this sort of information was not available to us. And uh, at the time, Tesla doesn't have a, have a press office, as we talked about a lot on this show. So you've got nobody yeah. really to call and say, just want to double check. Because, you know, we have these conversations in the office, like, what tires is this on? This is, uh, what's the rolling resistance? You know, we've done a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So in the end, we said, all right. You know, we went we went out on Twitter and we just said, okay, thanks for the thanks for the additional information. And we just amended the story. And if you go on to edmunds.com slash news, you'll see the you'll know, you'll see the um, the amendment that we made. You know, and and actually it's been kind of interesting because you imagine, yeah, there's a bunch of people. I mean, you were laughing as I came on the show. Uh there's a bunch of people like enjoy you making, you know, there's still a thing happening. But actually, most people across all our social channels have said, you know, thanks for issuing the correction. You know, appreciate you doing that. And um and a you know, clarification and, that that and version a, and of a, it, and a clarification. which is no longer for sale, came with the different tires. But you also did say you came very close to the claim 340 miles, and you didn't have the right like arrow hubcaps that Tesla's supposed to be redoing or something now. So that's it, that that's right because they've basically been you know they've been having a, a a problem with them. They're going to um they're going to update them. Uh, because it was ba basically, I think it was actually impacting on the tire itself. So we we recognised that that would probably have a bearing on the well, would have a bearing on the um on the range figure. I mean, the Edmunds EV range test is something that we've say we spend like a extraordinary sum of money on, I and mean, we've even gone to the extent we have a little gadget in the vehicle uh, made by a company called Race Logic, but we had some proprietary software made for this gadget, which basically manages how we drive the vehicles. So if you're driving for 12 hours or we're, we're sharing drivers, we make sure that we are apples to apples in how we drive the vehicles. Yeah. So there's a lot of time and effort. Um, and we're actually about to relaunch our video at the beginning of as you're listening to this, maybe on Monday, we should, the video should be live again, where we talk about how we did the range test, what it looks like. So um, yeah, interesting, interesting times. And, you know, what we're going to do is get, when we get another vehicle on perhaps all season tires rather than all terrain, we'll go back, repeat the test. And if it's on the right wheels as well, uh, we'll, we'll do the same thing. And this is something that we do. If you look down our range leaderboard, if you go to edmunds.com slash range, it's about a hundred cars there. You'll see there's different trims for different vehicles and quite a lot to sort of dig into. Um, and then what, what's the feeling on, I'm going to go to that range page, by the way. Uh, how do you like the, how do you like it overall? What's, I mean, you know, there is, there's the range issue, which we were close and you've fixed it. And I get that much, but tell us about the Cybertruck. Is that like, yeah, well, just to finish up on the range thing, the range is good. good. I mean, I can score 334 miles is, is good. Um, what it's not as good as, if you look at the immediate competition, a dual motor Rivian R1T, 390 miles. Uh, so that's what 60, nearly, nearly, nearly 60 miles more than the, the Tesla. And then the F-150 light, uh, the F-150 Lightning, a little more at 345 miles. So the Tesla did well, but it didn't necessarily would do as well as its direct rivals. And also Tesla's been making big claims about efficiency. Um, I was watching a Leno video and, you know, their, their chief designer, Franz, was coming out and say, oh, you know, we can be twice as efficient as some of our rivals. Well, our figures show that that's actually not the case um, and that the Rivian and the Lightning were um, were a little bit more efficient. But they're all, they're all a kind of much of a muchness and around efficiency. And they're all big, heavy trucks. So if you buy a Cybertruck, it's going to cost you twice as much to run as if you buy a Model 3. I mean, it would be if you're talking gas, but, uh, you know, it's worth it's worth bearing in mind. So what do we think of it overall? Well, I was there in the fall of 2019. I don't think you were there, Matt. Were you were there that no. night of SpaceX? So I was there on the famous night where, you know, they threw the ball bearings at the windows and everything <laughs> yeah. smashed and it was all... 
it was all a bit surreal and you know the whole evening was just bizarre because this you know it started off it was like we're going to take we're going to revolutionize the truck market this is going to be the model three moment for trucks here's a ram here's a chevy here's a ford we're going to beat them all blah blah, blah. and then the cyber truck appeared and you know, I was just like right when they're going to show us the real one yeah and even at the end of the evening i remember it really well like elon like went on for hours and then eventually kind of wandered off stage right and or stage left my right and i'm even then thinking like surely surely like is something going to happen you know is there going to be like a, a bang or explosion and a bit of smoke and like you know it almost felt like this cyber truck that we saw was going to like be a, a russian doll and it would suddenly explode yeah. and become the real truck because everything they talked about gave you the impression that actually this is just going to be a a sort of model y in truck form and if you think about it from a business perspective it may have been radical when it came out, but now the Model 3 and the Model Y are just inherently sensible electric cars. There's nothing particularly radical about them. They're just well-executed, nice electric cars. So it was like, what the hell is this? And how the hell are they going to build this? And is it going to really cost 40 grand and be available in two years' yeah. time and do 500 miles? And of course, the reality was, no, it wasn't. It's taken, you know, best part of five years. It's twice as expensive as they originally said, it starts at the moment at 80 grand. There's a cheap one on the way. And then, but it's never going to be 40 grand and it doesn't do 500 miles and all the rest of it. But the reality is like five years old, we have something which looks pretty much exactly the same or almost yeah. exactly the same as the trick that I rode in that night. And it's super easy to be cynical about it because it's quite silly. But I really liked it. I just thought this is just like, you know, we live in a world where everything's got a bit kind of sensible and normal and a bit boring. And I just, it's it's a rock star. I just thought this is, you know, it's too expensive. It's a bit big. Lots of things are a bit silly. There's definitely occasions where function follows form. But like, it's fun, you know, makes the world go round. That that roof line above the cabin it really kind of peaks up high but it has such an angle on it is it is it roomy inside is it comfortable inside can you see out of it i assume you can see out of the front but maybe not the back there's got to be just yeah, some kind of a camera so the front because the windscreen kind of starts over your head and then runs in a straight line and then joins the hut and basically goes in a straight line to to the the v before uh, at the at the base of the at the base of the car, it's you can't see the nose, so you're then reliant on. So it's not like a traditional truck where you can see the corners. You can't see the nose. So, and the bottom of the windscreen is, I don't know, five feet away from like the steering wheel. I mean, you could almost camp between. We could almost camp on top of the dashboard. It's that big. It's like one of yeah. those beds in a, in a you know in an RV. So. That takes a bit of getting used to, but the visibility, they've got big pillars, like big A pillars around you, but because you've got like an extra triangle window uh, that you kind of look through as you're turning right or left, and you've got a bunch of cameras, the visibility forward is okay. And then on the rear, if you have the tonneau cover down, oh, sorry, the tonneau cover up, you can't see anything, so you're reliant on a camera. There's literally no rear view. If you have the tonneau cover down, then you've got this really small rear view mirror which looks like it's just there for the legals and you can't really see anything through that either so you're reliant on looking at the image on the center screen now this is one of the bits that i don't you know tesla's obsessed with having one screen and everything on it if you're driving along and you're wanting to look at the rear view mirror now yes we're used to looking like up and right but why yeah. not just have it on a little screen in front of you so you could see what's going on behind you as you're looking forwards and also because the blind spot monitoring when you turn left, the blind spot camera shows in the middle of the screen. So you sort of get ready to turn left, but have to look right, which is really weird and takes a bit of getting used to. And it'd just be so much better if you had like a little, you know, like a little secondary screen in front of the steering yeah. wheel. But they seem to be almost like dug in on this point. But the visibility is not, not like the drama that you might think. Um, you've got this little squircle squircle i think they're calling it. is it squircle or yes squircle steering wheel so but the really interesting thing and i think this is the thing that stands out more than anything else about this 
it has drive-by wire steering. Now, we've seen this before, but this is the first time you haven't had a mechanical redundancy as well. Hmm. So they're wholly reliant on drive-by wire. Now, at first, there'll be a lot of people going, oh, my God, that's like a huge safety concern. The reality is airplanes have had this, as you know, for decades. So it's yeah. not it's not such a big, you know, I don't, it doesn't feel like such a big drama. And what it's allowed them to do is have really aggressive variable ratio steering. So the first time we got into it was in our, in our car park in the office, put a little bit of lock on, and it's like, whoa, we nearly hit the wall. Because if you're at a standstill, lock to lock is literally like a Formula One, like a Formula One car at Monaco. You can you don't you don't turn your hands over. It's just it's just if you're watching the YouTube, it's like there to there, and that's it. Because the the variable ratio is so aggressive, then at, then at highway speeds, uh, you know you go back to what you'd call a, like a normal well, steering lock. That was kind of the flaw when the yoke came out in in the plaid. You're going you can't go hand over hand with a yoke, and people are like. I don't know. They put a yoke in an Indy car. It's like, yeah, because they only turn about <laughs> 90 degrees. So yeah. Tesla kind of figured out you have to have this wildly aggressive variable ratio steering. So if it's low, you could you have to be able to turn completely like this and not go hand over hand like you're talking about. You know, and like they can only do that with drive by with genuine drive by wire. Right. So the great irony now is a yoke. I'm not saying I want one, but a yoke in a cyber truck <laughs> would make far more sense than a yoke in a plaid where it makes People who see my video makes no sense at all. Yeah, but they put this squirrel. But largely, they were saying, "Oh, it's better if if you're going off road, you might want to like grab the wheel in different places." Actually, it works fine, but it is sort of slightly odd to have like a really small wheel in such a big truck. And there's been lots of people like saying, "Oh, it drives like a car." Well, it doesn't. You know, it's a it's on 35 inch, you know, 35 inch. Um, tires with with a you and, know and you with, drove with with a little, little bit more of the off-road tr tread on the tire the, right? so this is the this is the foundation and that's how it was supplied yeah. it's, it's fancy goodyear uh all-terrain tires so they're all-terrain tires but built for low rolling resistance they're quite a sophisticated thing um but it drives so it doesn't drive like a car you know you're always conscious this is a big heavy truck not as heavy as a rivian or a lightning which is quite an achievement given the stainless steel but it's still a it's still a massive almost full-size truck it's shorter than an f-150 but 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 lower and wider so it's as wide as a raptor so it's like you've got yeah. to mentally compute that it's a wide thing but the ride quality is amazing like really really good it's super stiff air suspension and considering like it's on off-road off tires of it's uh it's really impressive and of course this is we just drove the two motor version which is 600 horsepower not the tri-motor but it's still like faster than you need any you know, any huge truck to be. So it's really fast. It's really refined. There's not a lot of tire roar or anything. The ride quality is excellent. It's pretty maneuverable because it's got four wheel steering. You know, to drive, it's it's great. It's, it's and, you know, I thought I enjoyed it more than I sound like a thing. I, I enjoyed it far more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. You know, it, it, it works. It's really well engineered. And the other thing I should say, actually, because we've been really critical of this in the past, it's well built as well. Like, you know, some of the stainless steel doesn't quite, you know, line up and things like that. But the, the fit and finish inside, it feels really solid, which is not something you could say of like early Model 3s. Yeah, there's there's been a few issues with the stainless steel that have been popping up more. There's been a little bit of staining, a little bit of like surface rust marks, and there's some ways to clean it and uh, test yeah, the guy, they... a, a recommendation for it. But I still, it's like, I don't know. I mean... I get it because wrapping it or doing a PPF or something like that is all pretty expensive, but you know, not, not really that expensive considering the price of the vehicle. You know, like you said, if it was $40,000, like it was supposed to be, I, I would, I would hesitate spending, you know, thousands of dollars more on, on, a, on a wrap or, or the PPF or something. Cause it just doesn't fi make sense financially, but you're into the truck for almost a hundred thousand, you know, certainly North of 80,000 for whatever the base version is uh yeah i guess you can wrap it or ppf or something i i think it's gonna really to see what people do because that was our big reservation you know about how you know also like fingerprints you know you, you lean on the you lean on the hood and you, you suddenly your fingerprints are there and we this was not a vehicle from tesla this is a vehicle we sourced from an individual and it was like oh please don't clean my car <laughs> it's like <laughs> what yeah so there's all these like little eccentricities that 
that come with it. But you know, it's really spacious inside. There's plenty of room in the back. Um, you know, the, the bed. How about is... the bed? How is it as a truck? So the bed is a little bit longer than an F-150 Lightning's, um, but it's compromised a little bit because you've sort of got the the recline of the rear seats sort of impact on the bed a little bit. So it's not a it's not a square bed like it is in the Ford or the or the Rivian for that matter. So you're sort of compromised a little bit there. Um it's, but it's still a it's still a big usable bed. And of course you've got a suspension so you can jack it down to load stuff into. Um because of the shape of the vehicle, you've got issues, you know, if you're trying to load stuff over the side. I mean, I'm six foot four and I've like ridiculous arms. And you know, it's a bit of a stretch for me. But again, like these are things that you can wear. It's got it's got you know, you've got different options for tying stuff down. You know, the front, the front trunk, that's uh that's smaller. That's like you can get like an overnight bag in there, but it's not as big as like the lightnings. Yeah. Uh, but it's still reasonably reasonably usable. Uh, but it can you know, it it's not it's not it is a truck. It has like a six foot two bed. Which is you know, a little bit compromised, but not massively compromised. The the companies like like Chevy and Ford have been doing trucks for a long time, get pretty creative with the tailgate and steps to get in and multiple ways of opening it. And it lays flat, it opens on the side, and and there's a step that comes down and and try to make the bed as accessible as possible. If you can't really get stuff over the side of the bed of the truck because of the weird shape of of the truck. Um, what what about the getting into the back of the truck? Are they doing anything with the tailgate or any steps or anything like that to get in like the other companies? Uh, no, because you know, like an F-150, well, you know, is that nice, that cute little step that comes out. Yeah. It's like the old man step, isn't it? Yeah, with the and I handle. have to use it because I'm tiny, so I got to use it all the time. <laughs> yeah, so so you need to work. If you go buying a cyber truck, you need to work on your upper body strength because you're going to have to kind of like, you know, like, like getting out of a swimming pool. Yeah. Um, apart from... You know, the Lightning, as you know, doesn't have air suspension. So you can't lower the, the ride height, whereas the, the Tesla does. Yeah. So actually, if you drop the ride height to to like like an entry-level mode, then it becomes a lot easier. But yeah, I think they missed a trick. They haven't got any, you know, there's no like cup holders in the back. There isn't like something for measuring. And there's a few little like working truck things that are kind of cute in the Ford that it doesn't, that the yeah. Tesla doesn't have. And the power outlets and stuff. I don't know if it has that. Yeah, it has 240. It has 240. It has a okay. couple of 110s yeah. in the back doesn't have an air compressor like the Rivian. It also has a like a an underbed like storage box like the Rivian does, like uh, something like the um the Honda uh the Honda truck does as well, but it's not big enough for a spare tire. In the Rivian you can put a spare tire in, in the Tesla you can't. So if you want to take a spare tire, you've literally just got to chuck that in the bed. And that's a bit rubbish. And Tesla was talking about, I think I saw on their website, uh, eventually having some bigger battery option that goes in the bed of the truck. But yeah, that seems more like a permanent installation. I don't see it as like a removable uh, installation. It seems like it would be awfully heavy and complex to to try to get it in and out. Like you'd have to, I, I mean, I don't know if it's something like two people could do or you need a, you know, a, need a, a Bill Goldberg. Of sorts. <laughs> yeah. You need, you need a Goldberg to, to do it, uh, to, to figure it out or some sort of like a crane of sorts, like a cherry picker, like an engine puller or something yeah. to get it out of there. Um, I mean, yeah, it's an interesting thought, but I, it, it, it was just kind of weird to me when it came out. Cause I was going, Hey, you know what? It's a smart idea if you want to increase the range, but I was also thinking it was like, yeah, but a lot of people that may want to increase the range are people that are going to go off road or, take a weekend trip camping or something. And then what did you just do to the bed of it? Like if you're doing tents and making it as a sleeping area and camping out of the back, because on the website, they're like, Hey, check out the cool tents. And you're like, great. I wish I had 450 miles of range and all the cool tents. And then you go, well, if you put the battery in the back, you probably can't get much else in the back of the truck. Well, you can't get your tent in. You can't get it, it is because if, if you've not seen one of these things, it's like you know you can get an iPhone. I want mine here. You like you have your iPhone and you put those yeah. like external batteries, like block, stick them on the back. Exactly, it's that principle. It's basically like, but you're right. This thing is like big and heavy. I don't think it's like an iPhone case that you can just like stick on and off. Well, if they were going to do something, why wouldn't? Maybe this is something for the aftermarket when they start getting more into EVs. Why wouldn't they make a battery that fit into like the frunk or into 
the storage space in the bed of the truck that you were talking about. You're saying maybe it's not quite it, as big as a spare tire, but <clears throat> would it do anything? Yeah, and that, maybe that's, it just that's... doesn't add enough range. Maybe a battery of that size only adds 50 mile of range and it's not worth the whatever $10,000 or whatever it could cost. It's, I can't imagine it'd be inexpensive. Uh, uh, no, maybe that's, maybe that's the, the, the thing, but you're right. It's, yeah, what what kind of solution? You know, what 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 better solution? I mean, imagine that Tesla's tried to come up with the best solution that they can, and it'd be interesting to see whether they um, sell any of these or whether it just becomes. Oh, there you go. Right. You're so you're looking on, on the website. You're watching you on see... YouTube. So basically, it turns the bed into like a like half of the bed, a reasonable trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And listen, if you want a Tesla, and but you want the bed of a Maverick, then this is what you get. You get it with the big yeah. battery, and you got. The size of a of, of a Ford Maverick <laughs> as far as storage, and the other the other problem is like from a weight distribution that's really heavy and that's really high. The I mean the the beauty of the batteries is that they're always so low in EVs. Yeah, and you're also now bringing up a picture of the spare wheel, which is 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 literally just dumped in the bed. Now you can't do both. Apparently, you can't. If you're looking at the pictures what? on the website, you can't really do. I don't know if you put the battery in, you then put the tire in, then that basically that's it. That, you've the, got a you've it. got a full size truck with no luggage yeah. capacity. Maybe you could get the fancy tent in there somehow. I don't. I don't think you could. I mean, not with the not with the tire or the battery. It's. I mean, look, it's really easy to be cynical about this car, and there's a little bit of me that there's. At least at the moment, until they become more commonplace, and frankly, they'll only become more well, commonplace right. in LA for a while. That uh, I'm glad overall <laughs> that you guys like it, and and I'm sure it's it's a great conversation piece as well. I'm sure everywhere you went, people wanted to talk about it and see it, and that can be kind of fun as well. If you, you if you want understated, then you're not getting a Cybertruck, but that's it's meant to be polarizing. And I can't wait to to drive one. It seems like it would be fun to drive. And if it's as comfortable and as roomy as you say, I think that would be interesting to drive. As somebody who has a truck that I that I drive, I'm curious in in the cyber truck. I'm not necessarily sure it's for me, but I don't I don't hate it. I just don't think it's for me. But I definitely want to drive it. See, I, I think I part of the pro part of the problem might as well is is at least at the moment until it becomes more commonplace like it is like being a celebrity yeah that you know you, you you turn up in it everywhere you go and it somebody wants to look at it somebody wants to cut you up people take pictures of you people want to talk about it um and maybe if you're extrovert that's part of the fun like you cannot be introverted and buy this car <laughs> yeah you know you've just got a you've got a brace but that was also true of the model three when it first came out. i remember right driving early model threes and everybody was so excited about it because it seemed so different and now they're you know that especially if you live in California, they're everywhere. So it'll be interesting to see like where we are with the cyber truck in three or four years' time. Like how many they're building, how many they're selling, how commonplace are they? You know, what's the stainless steel looking like? Um, there's a lot of question marks still. Yeah. But it's better, it's better as a vehicle than I thought originally it was gonna be. And I kind of like it despite I say like it despite myself because I like eccentric things and like I think it's too big. If you live in LA, it's too big for me. Yeah. You know, having something that as wide as a Raptor is hard work. But then having, you know, having something that you can, um, having you know, if you had it a little bit smaller, a bit, you know, the Rivian is much easier to live with as a truck than the Cybertruck is. But it's less ex, you know, it's less exciting, less eccentric. So. I mean, if you just want like a good versatile all rounder, the the Rivian's a nice thing. Obviously, the Lightning's a bit more of a working truck, but yeah, the Cybertruck at least works as family transport. And like my kids loved it. My kids were so excited. You know, I've got the Tesla. One of the Tesla facilities is right around the corner from me. It's it's like a quarter mile away. It's a half a mile away, and I pass it a couple times a day every day when I come over here. And yeah, there's been a handful of, of of them buzzing around that facility, pulling in and out of the place. And and I, I don't know if it's w what they're doing specifically. I'm sure it's just a lot of like ride alongs, like people are showing up and they're like, let's go for a ride in this thing. Because they're they're just kind of buzzing around the neighborhood and getting off the, the freeway here and back on the freeway. And I'm sure it's a lot of that people going, hey, let's figure this out or let's go for a ride or check this out or here's some features. And because it's not a dealer, it's like a service center or, or in some offices or something. I'm not quite sure what it is but it's a big 
big Tesla building. <laughs> That's not a dealer. It's all gated up. You can't get into it. Uh, but they're, yeah, they're interesting to see. And I, like I said, I would, I'm definitely interested in driving one. Uh, so I got to ask when, when have you guys gotten any updates? Like when do you, when does Edmunds get yours that you guys bought? Edmunds get us. Uh, no, I mean, this is, we don't know. I mean, sometimes with Tesla, you just, you know, sometimes you get a random email that says, oh, by the way, it's arriving in two days time. That's happened to us before. Um, right now read, we don't I just, know. I just read today that there's some more color options and I didn't dig into it, but maybe there's more wrap options in color. So, uh, yeah, and I'm, not even sure how order. <laughs> I'm not even sure how they're, how they're doing that. I saw a black one near me. There's a, there's a few that yeah. have started to knock around my neighborhood. Uh, it looks quite cool in black. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We ordered the tri motor partly because we figured, well, yeah. Normally, if you're building a launch edition, you know the 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 manufacturer goes all in and makes as much money as possible. So uh, we, but we, it's the dual motor that we drove, and we'll see. We'll see. We're excited about it, though, and you know, it'll be as you say, it'll be interesting to see how it ages. So Tesla has um, they have the their stealth black, and they have a satin white. Um, and I'm trying. Oh, I don't out. fancy a white Cybertruck. Uh, they're about six thousand, sixty-five hundred bucks. Um, and it's a wrap. It's a wrap, or a... I believe it's a wrap. Uh, I believe it's a wrap. I mean, six grand is probably what you'd pay in the aftermarket, to be yeah. honest. If you wanted to, for something of that scale. Yeah. I mean, maybe I that's the maybe that's the move is to is to wrap your stainless steel because well, that's kind of what I was thinking as well. Is like, you know, why not why not try to do a wrap? It's mm. probably easier because you'd be able to. You know, you can always maintain it and you can and change it later or, or, you know, redo a hood or something and, you know, sure it, it sticks as well onto that as anything else, probably better than, than paint would stick to stainless steel. Um, I think they're saying satin ro rose gold, um, satin abyss blue, and what they call slip gray. Are going to be the three new colors that are joined, joining the black and the white, and then of course the pure stainless. The new colors are sixty five hundred bucks, and then the black and the white are six thousand. And so, uh, yeah, I believe they're all wraps. Uh, uh, I remember a story. It reminds me of a story that. This was like, oh, God, going back forever. But Audi brought out an aluminium body, sorry, aluminum body <laughs> version of the A8. Yeah. And it was a big deal at the time. And then, oh, there you go. I just putting it in like a normal color. Then maybe the white looks okay, actually, if it's a satin. Yeah. I haven't seen the white. I've seen a black one around here. I haven't yeah. seen someone do the white yet. I'm sure I'm going to pass one at this Tesla facility. I saw like Someone's a pink one on Twitter. Uh, yeah. that looked looked ridiculous, but um, yeah, go with this Audi anecdote. So they launched this aluminium car, aluminium car, and then Jaguar did the same thing with the XJ. And I was talking to somebody from Jaguar late later, and the car looked a bit like it was at an auto show, and everybody was like pouring over it. It looked like a dog's dinner after a couple of days. <laughs> and they said to us, "I said, look, we went and talked to somebody at Audi, and said, like, I don't understand. Like, you had an alum aluminium car, and it looked great, and ours looked crap after like a few hours." He said, like, what happened? He said, well, we painted it. <laughs> I yeah. just put a lacquer on it. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, oh, we didn't think of that. Yeah, just got to do a do a clear coat on it. Then you yeah. can maintain it and polish it and clean it uh, and wipe uh, it down. And maybe, and... maybe that's the maybe that's the way with your Cybertruck or at least like a clear well, coat wrap or I mean, something. I mean, certainly part of the issue, I guess, like with DeLorean and everything back in the day, was trying to do stainless steel is it's difficult to get paint to stick to it. So if you and I'm sure, you know, the chemicals have changed over the years of uh, someone's DeLorean tried it. But um, I, and I'm sure it would last a while. I just don't think you'd be able to get like a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty on on paint, you know, uh, of stainless steel. And if you just yeah. clear coat the stainless um i without any primer i i i just don't know how how that works without some maybe Matt, you know, what we need to do is get on a rapper uh, yeah by which i mean a, a not a musician um 
then we maybe need to get somebody on who can, or maybe somebody's listening can actually talk to us about this because well, it must I, be a challenge, right? How you because the the DC properties are going to be different. Uh, so how's Tesla doing it, and how do you do it? And maybe we should do one. We wrapped our Model Three back in the day as a stunt. Maybe we should do the same with the Cybertruck, or maybe you could do like one of those Harlequin ones. You ever see that Volkswagen did that? The Harlequin, where every panel is a different color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen, I I feel like this is already being asked. Like custom shops and stuff are getting asked this question. Yeah. Somebody's asking House of Color or some other paint company going, I want to paint a cyber truck. Like, what's what do we got to do here? Can mm. I just clear coat it and protect it? Or can I can I change the color? Is there a good primer? How do you make the stick to stainless? I'm sure there's a solution for it. But in the meantime, we, we have really, really good wraps. Like, but if you think of a wrap when it came out years ago, it was like, eh, it wasn't that great. And the, the clear bra, the, the PPF, you know, got a lot of orange peel. It's kind of weird, turned yellow pretty quickly. But now they're they're all pretty good st- yeah. stuff. You know, if you talk to somebody at Expel, I'm sure they're, they have thoughts on on how to properly wrap a cyber truck <laughs> and a DeLorean, I guess. <laughs> you could get them to match. <laughs> Indeed. Um, all right, listen, I think we're kind of uh, running out of time for this week. Is there anything else we need to touch on or we can get it all next week? Uh, no, but if you check out my um, Instagram and Edmund as well, I'm at Weaver on Cars, as you hopefully know by now. Yeah, we're going to put some more pictures of the Cybertruck. There's some really cool stuff down by the beach. So, uh, or Edmund's Cars Instagram is all over there as well. So I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to the photos and seeing more of because uh, all we've gotten so far is just some limited press photos. Like even just scrolling through the Tesla's website, it, it's all pretty and it's everything's dark and black and stylistic and half of it's probably you know computer generated anyway so uh i'm sure the i'm sure the battery pack a <laughs> picture is computer generated because that thing doesn't exist yet um but yeah i'm i'm glad you guys uh liked it and got a chance to to test it and have some fun with it for more than you know 24 hours and i uh, yeah looking forward to get in the call when you guys get yours delivered so yeah we'll let you and, come and have a go it out. <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna film a tiktok if you're getting in the back <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get a running start i got a little trampoline yeah. in the other room and i'm gonna run and jump on that thing and dive into the back because <laughs> i don't know how else i'm gonna get a <laughs> little step ladder um all right guys thanks so much for listening uh you can uh you know where we are on social media we appreciate that check out edmunds.com you can read more all about the test that these guys did uh at uh at uh at the Edmonds website so you can uh, check all of edmunds.com slash news there you go all right thanks buddy until next time keep the air and the spare and the bag and the wheel for the latest updates and call-in times follow the show on facebook twitter and instagram at carcast show if you'd like to write in fill out the form on carcastshow.com and don't forget to give us a nice rating on itunes CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit carcastshow.com.